Apollo, the birth of Apollo. The sacred island of Delos was not always fixed in its present position in the archipelago of the Cyclades, but driftly, drifted endlessly over seas and oceans. Until one day a goddess set foot upon its shores, fear and anguish written upon her face. Her name was Leto. In her womb she bore two of Zeus' children, Apollo and Artemis. And now she was seeking a place where she could give birth. O oh, Hylan, cried the goddess, age long wanderer upon the waves, give me refuge and let me bear my children on your soil. I have been hunted all over the world by Python, the fierce, fearsome monster which Jealous Hera sent after me to seek revenge. I have been to Attica and to Thrace, to Lesbos, Chios, everywhere. Now where will they let me give birth? They all fear the terrible Python and the wrath of Hera. Receive me now, O island, you who know what endless wandering means, and I promise you that Apollo, the son of whom I shall bear, will raise on your soil a splendid temple that will make your name renewed. Hardly had these words passed Leto's lips when a violent and trembling shook of the whole of Delos. Two huge rocks thrust themselves upwards from the sea, bed and the island settled firmly upon them, fixing itself once and for all in a position where it lies today. Thus, Delos received later. Immediately, a host of other goddesses came to let us aid. Nine whole days and nights she was in labor, and when, on the tenth night, she finally bore her children, the darkness immediately turned to bright daylight and the sun appeared in its majesty in heavens, casting its golden beams upon the island. Truly, it could not have been otherwise, for the sun that she bore was the god of light, golden-haired Apollo. And with him was born stirred Artemis, goddess of moonlight nights. Four days, days passed, and already Apollo was like you filled with immortal power. When Hephaestus made him a gift of silver bow, with golden arrows so that he could not miss their mark, the young god resolved to kill the python, the monster that had pursued his mother so relentlessly. Swift as lightning upon the flesh to Parnassus, where the dreadful monster had his lair. Until that moment, nobody had dared to raise his arms against the python, which spread unheard of miseries all around it. However, he dragged his serpent's body, the, the off, and all its fruits decayed, and a full rottenness spread over the land, whilst men died immediately. They set eyes upon its awful form. As soon as the fearsome dragon realized that someone had dared to try strength against it, it came out of his lair and wound his huge leg among the rocks, searching out for the enemy. When the monster saw that the being who stood before it was none other than the child of Leto, it went mad with anger and flecks of foam dripped from his mouth in its fury. Raising itself upon its naked coils, the python loomed threateningly over Apollo, drawing his head back for the lunge that would tear the young god into bloody pieces. Quicker than lightning, Apollo loosed a single arrow at the python and hit straight between the eyes. 
A terrifying howl echoed through the mountain gorges as the horrible monster, mortally wounded, beat its writhing scales against the rocky slopes of Mount Parnassus, coiling and then uncoiling to its full length. Sadly, it raised itself huge and threatening, so its full height only to fall back again with a fearful thud which shook the whole mountain. The python was dead. Overjoyed by his great victory, Apollo to his beloved golden lion began to sing the pain of victory. To the triumph of a heroic feat was added yet another triumph. A triumph that was no more than a song, but a song so wonderful the world had never heard like this before. From its words and music sprang all the contrast between savage struggle and peace, between destruction and creation, death and life. It was a song of overwhelming beauty and power. A song which nature heard in silent awe and which filled the eyes of oppressed mankind with tears of trembling happiness. When Apollo's pain had handed, the mighty clamor rose upon all the sides. It was the tumultuous cheers and delight cries of mankind and all nature. They rose of applause in this triumphant Rim, and ever since Apollo has rightly held and challenged the title of God of Music. Apollo buried the python on the side of Mount Parnassus, and over the monster's cave he built a temple and an oracle. This was the sacred oracle of Delphi, which reveals to men the judgments of Almighty Zeus, Apollo's father.